Today let's talk about screws. You know, most people have a love-hate relationship with these Phillips head screws, and they prefer the more stars or squares or robust or uh, Robinson or Torx uh, to them uh, just because they think they work better, uh, they strip out less, all that kind of stuff. And heaven forbid you put a straight uh, straight slot screw in their hands. They just, they would rather throw them away. And yet, the straight slot screws were the ones that our forefathers used religiously, and the people that are really building high-end furniture nowadays still use. Could it be that they know something that, that most of us don't? Could it be that they know the problem's really with our screwdrivers? So you look at the typical American Phillips head screwdriver and notice we have a wedging action down here. This is the best I can zoom in with this camera. It is not a complete flat. And you wonder why we wear these things out so often. And then look at the screws. They come down to a point, but there's really not much gripping the sides all the way around because the point is so tapered and up here it's a wedging action. So that wedging action is actually as you put torque to it, it wants to slide out. It wants to cam out. So the more you thread on it, the more torque you put on it, the more it slides out and all of a sudden you're just archiving against that one little corner right there and it begins to strip out. It's that wedging action of the actual screwdriver plus the wedge in the screw that makes it so difficult to use without an impact, which is basically keeping it all the way down and just torquing it in and out. Now let's look at the uh, square drives. Well, look at the driver itself. It's nice and straight on the sides. Huh. Wonder why that works so well. Can it, is it one of those drives where it won't actually cam, oh, wrong screw. Where it won't actually cam out you can actually hold it on the side and turn it so you can drive it in. There's no slop and the more torque you put on it, it's not going to twist itself out. How about these star drives? Well, what do you know? They're straight on the sides. They can actually torque on into it. Mine's a little bit worn out. So they can grip a little bit better. There's more points in there. Now, let's look at what they typically give us for the slot screwdrivers. They're all wedges nowadays. Oh, they will put these little grooves on the side to help you grip it, but generally you only have two thicknesses of screwdrivers nowadays, of slots, a big one and a small one, and they are both wedges. And what happens when you wedge something? Well, I imagine in the beginning it was a marketing decision because Craftsman could sell you two screwdrivers that would fit on all the screws. Because with a tapered design, it could fit the wide slots and the narrow slots. It would just didn't really matter. It was tapered. It was multi-function. The problem was that when you taper it, you're only touching it on these upper corners right there. And when you add torque to it, all of a sudden, you're adding just torque on these upper corners. And all of a sudden, they start wearing out and they wearing out. And every single strip screw kind of looks like that. You're not engaging the full side. Now your grandfather knew this because his grandfather had proper screwdrivers and they figured out why they would do it. So what he would do is he would go over to his grinder and grind it back. So he could get those cheaper screwdrivers to fit in the slot, longer slots and then more of the sidewall would engage so that he would get a better torque on it and they wouldn't strip as much. But it required a little skill at the grinder, but these were cheap tools because nobody else was using them because they were th basically trash to them, so they were throwing away. You could buy them at garage sales left and right. Regrind it if you messed up a grind, no big deal. Go get another one. Your great-grandfather, he had the right tools because he had a blacksmith made them, or a friend made them, or he bought them from a reputable company. And they would make them with the taper. Oh yes. But then they would grind the very bottom of it so it was flat. And you had different sized screwdrivers for different screws. So that the screwdriver matched perfectly the width right here. 
So it would get full contact along the entire side, plus it would be slotted in there just perfectly. So you could not only torque on it and get good strength, but it would grip it so you weren't sliding out all the time. So you ended up with a lot more screwdrivers to work all the different sizes of screws, but they function properly. And it's those straight edges with the shoulders. Those shoulders were important. Uh, and you learn about that in joinery when you're doing Morrison tendon joints. But with those shoulders, it became an incredibly effective tool. Not like what we got today. Now, are, here are my two common sizes of slotted screws. And they work wonderfully because they manufactured the screws with completely flat sides. And once again, it's hard to show you that one, but I'll do it on, I did it on the whiteboard earlier. And I basically keep two sides of it in here. And when you buy an entire set of screwdrivers, well, what do you know? Most of the screwdrivers are fitted to a single screw. So you're not having to hold it on there. It's the fact that we were using these bad screwdrivers that made driving these screws so dang hard. The manufacturers who know what they're doing, with, doing and your great-grandfathers who knew what they were doing actually used tools that were fitted to the fasteners. Lo and behold. So you end up getting different size screwdrivers for different size screws. Now, one of the last hobbies that really religiously uses slotted screws are gunsmiths. And wouldn't you know, in the upper levels of their tools, they have custom screwdrivers of all different sizes, of all different widths. And on the end, if you notice, I can drag my finger now here to show you. Hear that? There's a little lip right there. So this bottom section, the part that fits in the screw, is perfectly sized for the screw. Nice, good contact all the way through, just like our Torxes and Robinsons. Hey, maybe those old-timers knew something that it's taken us a hundred years to reinvent. Drivers that are straight and designed to fit the screw. Granted, in the old days, there'd be no way they could make these effectively, but the steel that they are using in these versus the steel you can buy in truly nice slotted screws is quite a bit different. These are somewhat almost handmade uh, in factories, and it boggles my mind that people want to, they spend $200 on the wood of a table and they're going to use screws, so they start skipping. Instead of spending 10 cents per screw, they want to spend a penny on a screw. Come on, guys. Spend a good little money, get a good fastener, and buy the tools that they go with. So for today's bonus, I want to talk about JoJo Woods. And this is another person who has seemingly grown up from a toddler to her current state as a carver within the wood carving community. She's a daughter of Robin Wood, the ge gentleman that's so known for uh, pole turning bowls and spoon carving, teaching. Uh, I mean, he was even uh, got some award from the Queen of England for his work. I mean, it's really phenomenal, but it's kind of funny that her skill level has so surpassed his that I think he's quit carving spoons. And She's, she's kind of a shy lady. She doesn't post very often. But what I like about her post, I mean, she's, she does more than spoon carving, but that's her main, that's where she earns her living, uh, is that a lot of pictures on Instagram are kind of there to make the product look probably a little bit better than they are. But her photographs, she's focusing on specific details that actually just shows skill level. And she, even at her current high state of skill, she's experimenting all the time. She's got some spoons out there where the facets on the back of the spoon form, form unique patterns. And she can create a bevel that flows from the very front, across the top, around the keel, and on back. A single bevel. How she does that, I don't know. It seems to defy the law of a grain to me. And it is kind of fun that every now and then she will show a uh, quick video on her work process. And the speed she carves stuff with an axe 
I mean, it's humiliating to me. I mean, I, she can bash them out so fast and get so far with just the acts. It might be the fact that she plays electro music while she's doing it. It seems like she's dancing with an axe as she goes along. But just examining her work is one of those people that really drives me to want to be a lot better. So check her out. Jojo Woodcraft on Instagram. Just look at the carvings that she's able to do. Mesmerizing.